What you drive says a whole lot about you. Do people see you as a highway hog and cringe when you're in the rear view? Or are you a 20 something driving a car built for soccer moms? What? We can't even watch it! We're gonna fill you in, whether you like it or not. People are gonna make judgments based on what kind of wheels you're rolling around in. In this video, we're gonna go through eight of the major stereotypes that people have towards certain types of cars. And at the end of the day, you are who you are. And you should be proud of that. About as proud as you should be of being a subscriber of Ideal Media. What, you're not? Hit that sub button below and join the Ideal fam. Oh, and don't forget to turn on notifications because we're here to tell you about what your car says about you. And I don't know if you're necessarily gonna love what you're about to find out about your car. Are you ready? Cause I am. Let's go. Now real quick, you're already subscribed to the YouTube channel, but did you know that we also have an Instagram? Yeah, I bet you're not following that. So hit the link down in the description and you can check out all the behind the scenes of Ideal Media and all the goodness of, you know, Squid and YouTube Girlfriend and I hanging out, doing things. And if you've ever been sitting in a bar or restaurant and you've overheard someone say, you know, those Germans really do just make the best cars. There's a really good chance that you've had a close encounter with someone who owns a BMW. For some reason, people who own this brand love to talk about how great their BMW badge is. And of course, their cars are top tier driving machines. There really is no denying that, but you rarely hear Lexus owners talking about how awesome their ES350 is and BMW boasters. Yeah, they're notorious for cutting people off in traffic without using their blinkers because they're out of blinker fluid. And I guess they just want to see how far they can push their German engineering. That is one feat, one solitary feat. I may be guilty of that too. And look, I know there's a ton of super respectable BMW drivers out there, but when I see that blue and white emblem in my rear view, I definitely clutch my steering wheel just a little bit tighter. If you already drive a BMW, don't worry. Not everyone is assuming you're a tyrant with just a set of tires, but just understand that a lot of people have been pissed off by BMW drivers, and we're all pretty sure that there's more bad experiences on their way. And if you can't stand sharing the road with a BMW driver, the next car on this list is gonna drive you up a wall. Let's be honest, if you're sitting in the driver's seat of a Ferrari watching this on your phone right now, there's most definitely a tub of hair gel in your glove compartment. And there's probably a freshly pressed Versace shirt that you just picked up from the cleaners hanging in the back seat. Ferraris are just about the flashiest wheels that you could possibly buy. And if you own one of these extravagant machines, especially if it's painted red, you're definitely trying to send that message that you have a ton of money and you're willing to spend it. Nothing wrong with that. Except Ferrari drivers are the kind of guys that valet their car at the club with a wad of hundreds poking out their pocket. And I drive a Ferrari. And when you're driving down the highway and you hear a roar of an engine flying by you followed by a red blur that scares you half to death. Yep, that guy was driving a Ferrari. More than you can afford, pal. Ferrari. <laughs> sure, they're flashy. They're egotistical. They're annoyingly loud. But if you have the money to buy the newest Ferrari model, why not splurge and let everyone know how fabulously rich you are? All I'm saying is that you don't have to throw it in everyone's face. And don't worry, the next car on this list is anything but flashy. In fact, you may even want to hide the fact that you drive one. Can you guess what it is? Well, before you do, it's definitely not ideal. And this limited edition tee, which is one of our best sellers, is now for sale. Go snag one before they're gone because you know what I'm about to say. And if you don't, you're seriously in denial. Soccer moms. I challenge anyone watching this right now and I want you to really think back and try to remember a single soccer practice that you went to as a kid where there wasn't a single minivan present. Think about it. Seriously, think about it. Yeah. I thought so. Chances are your childhood soccer field was lined with a row of minivans 15 minutes before practice was over, just waiting for a horde of muddy kids to jump in. And I get it. Some of us just don't want to shell out the cash for a new car. And so we end up rolling around in our mom's 2006 Honda Odyssey. And that's cool. Just accept the fact that people walking down the street are going to assume that there's a soccer mom inside the car, not you. And don't paint flames on the side. Just don't. That's not going to help. And you might rebuttal with, it's super safe and there's a ton of cargo room, Brad, so I can fit whatever I want inside. And I would say you're right, there are definitely some perks to driving a minivan. But 
it's still a soccer mom car, and there's no way in hell you would catch your boy Brad Danger in one. Uh-uh. And I wouldn't be caught dead in the next car on this list. Why? Because I don't need a massive lift kit to show you how much of a man I am. Right? <clears throat> right? Oh man, someone's gonna try to fight me in the parking lot for this one. Lifted trucks are hyper aggression in car form. If you drive one of these power lifted pickups, you're basically sending the message that everyone on the road is just a cockroach under your boot. And I get that driving a lifted truck might make you feel badass, but I will tell you, Firsthand, it is truly terrifying for anyone driving next to you on the highway. It's so big and scary. And there's nothing practical at all about having a lifted pickup. Mm -mm. If you really wanna use that truck bed for carrying supplies, wouldn't you want it to be closer to the ground and easier to access? Yeah. See, having a lifted pickup truck is really just a way to take up the most space you possibly can on the road and draw as much attention to yourself while doing it. However, I have a strange feeling that anyone watching this right now who owns a lifted pickup hasn't really listened to a word that I've been saying. And I get it, I talk a lot. But if you had been paying attention and you own a lifted pickup, I wonder how bad you wanna punch me straight in the face. I've heard my face is pretty punchable. At least that's what some of the commenters have said in the past. I don't really get it. Okay, maybe I do. And maybe I should watch my back from now on. But people who drive our next car on this list are definitely not the bar fighting type. In fact, they're probably pacifists more often than not. So did you study biology or ecology in college? Is your idea of a fun weekend driving around the mountains looking for a rare species of lizard? Then you probably wanna drive a Subaru wagon. I know I would, except I really don't like lizards. I'm more of a snakes guy. Yeah, these estate vehicles are hugely popular amongst intellectual types, specifically the ones that have beards. And they also put stickers all over their Nalgene bottles and wear overpriced Patagonia jackets. Hey, I have a couple of those. Plus, these people use the word rugged to describe just about everything that they like. But jokes aside, Subaru wagons do get considerably good gas mileage. So it makes sense that these owners talk about how important protecting the environment is. In fact, the professor at your university, you know, the one who started the environmental club and shows up to class in a flannel and smells like patchouli, I'll bet he's driving a Subaru Outback. And in truth, Subaru wagons don't actually perform that well off-road. But if the crunchy granola tree-hugging look is what you're going for, these cars can really kick it to the next level. And the next rig on our list has never, not once, been driven by somebody that would be called a tree-hugger, even sarcastically. These puppies are a close relative to the lifted truck guy. The Hummer guy also is primarily concerned with complete domination of any highway lane he enters. What is not a concern of Hummer guy whatsoever though is miles per gallon. Mm -mm. In fact, if you still drive a Hummer, you probably think that MPGs stand for multiple parking garages because that's how much space you're gonna need to park one of these things. I mean, have you ever seen a Hummer H2 ever try to fit into a normal civilian parking space? It's like Dwayne The Rock Johnson trying to fit into one of Tom Cruise's t-shirts. It ain't gonna happen. And Hummer guys are gonna try to tell you time and time again that these big rigs are off-road traversing vehicles. But the majority of Hummers that I've seen in my day have been spotless and shiny yellow. Kind of like a bumblebee. A bumblebee that got into someone's stash of steroids. But here's the mind-blowing piece of information. While GM discontinued the Hummer in 2010, and just kind of going on a hunch, but it was probably because of all the complaints that it was a gas-guzzling smog machine. And yet, GM actually has plans to release a fully electric pickup that bears the Hummer's name. And that should be really interesting to see if Hummer guys stay loyal, even with all that environmentally friendly electric mumbo jumbo added in. And the next car is about half the size of the Hummer. And so are its drivers. Because how many times have you seen a Volkswagen Beetle in a Gold's Gym parking lot? Never. Face the music, Beatles drivers. Woodstock was over 50 years ago. And if you own a VW Bug, there's a damn good chance that you either have flowers and a peace sign painted on it, or you've thought long and hard about painting peace signs and flowers on it. And what it ultimately boils down to is there's two type of Beatle owners. The first are old hippies that wanna sit down for hours and tell you all the stories about free love and the 70s. And two, young hipsters. And they have this unexplainable nostalgia for an era that they didn't even 
live through. VW Bugs are most often heard driving down the road with music from the likes of The Doors, or The Kinks, or The Strokes playing out their windows. And these cars have become the symbol for hippie counterculture. I mean, think about it. A guy in a suit and a tie driving a Volkswagen Beetle is about as common as a real live unicorn. So if you want your clients to trust you with their finances, probably don't show up in a rusted out old Beetle. But if you find yourself headed to a drum circle every Friday and Saturday night, then go ahead and get in that bug. Nothing's stopping you. In fact, drivers of this next car would probably get along with Beatles drivers. But there's only one thing that separates these two tribes, snobbiness. Of course, hybrid and electric cars are the future direction of the automotive industry. And we here at Ideal, of course, support the preservation of the environment. But let's talk for a second about the Prius, and specifically what it says about the people that drive them. Prius drivers have a reputation for being extremely vocal about how amazing their tiny little rides are. We've all heard the speech. My Prius needs so little gas. It's like I'm saving the earth while I drive it. Or I can't believe all those noisy cars outside. Ah. Noise pollution. My Prius doesn't even make a sound when I drive it. What, are you not using the accelerator? Yeah, we get it. You bought a hybrid because you're gonna save the world. But a little less judgment towards those of us that still drive petrol engines would be much appreciated. Like I said, the movement towards cleaner energy, it's a great thing. Most of us know that, and we don't need to be reminded every five minutes. So that's all the car stereotypes that we got for you today. I hope I didn't offend anybody too much. Well, okay, maybe I hope that I got a few of you. Let us know down in the comments what rang true with you. And if you plan on sending us hate mail because you drive one of these rides, maybe do something a little bit more productive, like subscribing to Ideal and smashing that like button. And if you dislike this video, don't just hit the dislike button once, hit it twice. Really let us know you mean it. And also check out some of our other Ideal content. And as always, keep living the Ideal lifestyle.